we're taking a look at the Daler Rowney Simply Watercolor Pan Set. It also includes 36 pans of watercolor and it is extremely similar to the Artist Loft 36 piece watercolor set in terms of color arrangement and uh, color selection. So I thought it would be neat to compare the two. So today we're going to swatch this set out. I haven't even opened it yet. And I'll go ahead and read the back to you. De La Rowney Watercolor Pan Set. Simply Watercolor Pan Set contains a selection of 36 colors, a brush, and is conveniently presented with a mixing tray. Free flowing transparent color with excellent tint strength and working properties. All colors can be used to produce beautiful and delicate washes. And when did this come out? I'm curious does not say. I was just wondering which one came first. So let's zoom it zoom in and I will go ahead and pop this open. I have a feeling these sets are going to be very similar but maybe I can help spare some of you guys from buying two. I mean even the brush looks very similar to the brush that was included in the Artist Loft watercolor set. Both of them are shrink wrapped with a belly band. So, a lot of similarities. Like the Artist Loft set, it uses um, these sort of domed little palettes. They bring more light into the watercolors. It makes the whole thing more appealing. And I picked this up at Walmart. And it just kind of looks more ratty than the Artist Loft set, which I didn't think all right, so already I'll open both up. Oh, so the hinged lid has already popped off because one of the little plastic pieces has broken. So already um, it's sort of falling apart on me. And that is a side-by-side -side comparison of the pans with the Daler Rowney here on the left and the Artist Loft on the right. And I apologize for the shadow. Let me see if I can adjust it a little bit to make it less of an issue. And already I think that certain colors are much chalkier than their Artist Loft counterparts. So, I'm gonna show you guys, oh, okay, well, the Artist Loft one just snapped off too. I think I can snap that back into place, but come on guys. So, okay, this is the brush they've included. As you can see, the tip of the brush is all splayed out. This is a brush from the Artist Loft set. They are very similar in that they are both very cheap. We'll do the water test. And as you can see, it stays splayed out. In fact, I think I should capture some photos of these because I'm always talking about good versus good brushes versus bad brushes. And sometimes I just don't have photos to convey that. All right, so just like with the artist lofts, I'm just going to add, uh, do my water adding as I go since these tend to be chalky and I am using a Creative Mark Rhapsody brush that I purchased from Jerry's Artorama. I highly recommend these for watercolor and for inking. They are great quality brushes and inexpensive compared to other Kalinske Sable brushes and no, they don't pay me to say that. Look, those are the white paints in that set come out like chalky and muddy and ugh. And these don't seem to activate as quickly, ooh, as quickly as the um, Artist Loft ones do. I am scrubbing that water around trying to get the paint to activate, but it's just not really working. I never thought I would say that Artist Loft made a superior product. And also like all these little weird bits are coming off in my water, like chunks. 
I may um, do this swatch and then swatch certain colors um, after the water's had a chance to soak in to see if that is maybe what's going on here, that maybe I should have pre-activated them. But honestly, for a comparable price and for same amount of colors, the Artist Loft set might be the better pick if you are a brush letterer or a card maker, just somebody looking for an accessible, um, easy to use watercolor kit and you don't really want a lot of colors because these are not, so they are transparent, which is what they promise, but they are very weak. And uh, in 2015, I reviewed the Daler Rowney Simply Watercolor Tubes as part of my affordable art supply challenge in the Walmart section of said challenge. And I had the same complaints about their tube watercolors as I am having tonight with these pan watercolors, just really unimpressive stuff. I also reviewed ugh, um, a kit by Talons, which was very similar to these and to the Artist Loft. And you can check out that review also at natosoup.blogspot.com. Just search for Talons, T-A-L-O-N-S, in the blog specific search bar. And I apologize for any background noise. I am visiting family for Christmas and they are in the other room enjoying a movie. And uh, I'm doing this. But we're baking gingerbread, so it's all good. Plus, I also promised you guys, although this is all simultaneous for you, but I promised you guys that I would catch up on some of my review backlog So while I was here. So that's what I'm doing. These are really disappointing. I mean, yes, they're very transparent, which I know um, maybe you guys are interested in more transparent watercolors. Um, and you know, really only the field test will tell. So I may try to treat these the way I would hire in transparent watercolors um, with the artist lofts that are very similar to these, but perform better. I'm probably going to treat them like opaque watercolors and keep things um, simple. But with these, I mean, since they're advertised as transparent watercolors and they're just having really poor color performance, um, there's just no saturation to these at all. Um, I may try to treat them as I would transparent watercolors. And even if you're working with transparent watercolors, you're going to have with nice watercolors, and these are very cheap watercolors to be fair, but with nice watercolors, you're going to have more intense color if you're working directly from the pan with just a little bit of water like this, you're gonna get much more intense color than what I am getting here. But, you know, I will allow the water to soak into these pans and uh, revisit this in a few minutes and we'll see if, if it doesn't, they don't behave a little bit better. All right, so those are very disappointing, very thin colors. But like I said, we're going to sort of let the water work its magic and return to these in a few minutes. All right, guys. So those paints have had a chance to absorb some water. In fact, I'm going to have to add some more because they have absorbed it too well. And we're going to see if we can't get a little bit more color saturation out of these inexpensive pans. As it is though, I'm really unimpressed by these. These are pretty terrible and uh, I would highly recommend you avoid them in favor of the myriad of better options. Even the tube Daler Rowney Simply Watercolor paints are better than these. And I find this kind of confusing because Daler Rowney does make some good products. The FW acrylic inks are great. Um, so I don't really understand why, you know, some of the other products they'll lend their name to are just terrible. And, you know, yes, I do realize that the Simply line of Daler Rowney products is intended to be 
um, economical, but it doesn't mean they have to perform just so horribly, especially when something like Artist Loft makes a pretty decent opaque watercolor for around the same price point. And also, I don't understand why these are so bad when, I mean, the other Simply Watercolors that I've reviewed were not great watercolors by any shape, but they had better color saturation than these. Now, with cheap watercolors, at least cheap tube watercolors, they tend to have, um, well, they're just, com they're made differently than nicer watercolors. Um, watercolors usually have a water-soluble binder, and that can be a few things. Popular options are um, sucrose or honey-based binders, like M. Graham's has a honey-based binder. A few have fructose, but a lot of cheap ones use glycerin, and glycerin, you might be familiar with glycerin as, uh, you know, like in soaps. So you got a little bit better pickup when I when I went ahead and activated the color. Still not as good as the Artist Loft, and these have had a chance to soak up some water, and they are still just not, there's no color saturation to these at all. Especially compared to those Artist Loft, I mean, these are just terrible. So I'm going to try to quickly swatch all of them, but I don't really have high expectations for these. And I don't even know if I need to do a field test with these because if they're performing so poorly, even when I give them an opportunity to absorb water and I'm picking up a lot of, of whatever this is, a lot of gunk on the brush, you know, there's some opaque color on the brush. I mean, I'm really swirling it in the, I mean, you guys can see that. You, I'm really swirling it in there. I mean, even Crayolas work better than this. And that's saying something because Crayolas are, you know, the Crayola watercolors are designed to be washable and have a lot of flaws. I mean, that's the best color I've picked up so far is that one pink. And as I'm washing them off, just like strings of goo are coming off into my cup. Can y'all see that? Like chunks of something? And that was clean water. And I knew, I mean, I know it's going to get dirty. I'm a watercolor artist. I, and I don't expect it to be, you know, see-through either. But like, I don't normally get chunks of something floating in my watercolor water when I rinse my brushes with any other brand. So there is some strange additive. These are made with something weird and gross or just maybe a whole lot of glycerin and chalk, but something is just not making sense to me here. But I'm glad we're doing this and I'm glad we're doing this together because if you are watching this and you are a card maker, you are a brush letterer, uh, you're interested in maybe doing some, you know, some more simple watercolors that only have a few layers or really need vibrant color, then I can definitively say skip these and get the Artist Loft. Those are not, they're not half bad. Um, I don't exactly remember what I paid for either of them because I got the Artist Lofts a while back and then I got these Gee, I think probably when I was in Louisiana for MechaCon, so late July. So a lot of time has passed since I purchased these. Um, and so I don't remember the prices, but I do remember them being comparable in price. And I am putting them close together because if we were going to get any natural color movement or blending, I want that to occur. And I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, these are really weird. Sometimes I will scan my watercolor swatches from this um, and use them as art, digital art assets. And I mean, I will probably do that with these too, but I'm not gonna be able to use them for a whole lot. I mean, these, are, these are pretty rough, but you know what? Fortunately, we just took a look at the Artist Loft watercolors. So I have a better alternative I might be complaining a whole lot about these. Even the black is pretty unimpressive. Um, I might be complaining a whole lot about these, but I do have an alternative for you. So let's 
pull out for a moment. So these are the Daler Rowney Simply Watercolor watercolors in their broken pan. These are the Artist Loft watercolors. And these, this is how they swatched. They are a little chalky when dry. They're not quite as brilliant and beautiful as they were when they went down. I mean, they really put down some nice color. You can see some of the chalkiness now. And sometimes you'll get chalkiness when you're mixing opaque watercolors um, like Venetian red sometimes can get um, a little chalky when you mix all other colors into it but these are all a little bit chalky but I mean can how do I how do I put these side by side I mean really there's just no no true no no fair comparison I mean they even tried to offer some of the same colors and just side by side it's pathetic the, this is their purple. This is the Artist Loft purple. That's like a good, rich purple. I mean, the blues are really pretty. The cerulean blue is nice. This blue-green here is really nice, and you just don't get any of that in their blues. Um, the browns aren't bad either, and you just don't get anything with the browns. So my wholehearted recommendation is to skip the Daler Rowney Simply watercolors. They're not worth your time. They're not worth your money. If you want some cheap watercolors um, to do some brush lettering or some card art or some watercolors that don't have a lot of layers, uh, I highly do recommend the Artist Loft watercolor set for that purpose. It seems really good. I also recommend the Sakura of America uh, Sakura Koi field uh, field sketch sets that comes in 12 and I want to say 24 and I want to say 36 and I own the 12 and I own the 36 and if you guys are interested I can dig up my 36 but most of my convention style watercolors are done with the 12 and it is plenty adequate for me I don't get the level of chalkiness I mean maybe the level of chalkiness is comparable to the artist law but I better color saturation, very vibrant colors, very affordably priced, very compact, ready to go. So I really recommend that set if you are interested in learning watercolor or learning brush lettering with watercolor or interested in using watercolor with your stamps. So I am not doing a field test with these at all and I am going to pass these on to another victim probably, <laughs> oh, probably when I do my burn it box. Um, so I will see you guys again really soon. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you found this helpful. You can find photos of the colors and the swatches over on the blog at natasoup.blogspot.com. Check out the watercolor basics section. I have loads of tutorials, tips, and tricks to get you painting. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Bye!